now, so um, I just want to make a couple more announcements that I made to most of the class, if you do that. Um, just housekeeping stuff. So, in terms of your grades, again, if you've had your debate already, you're graded, meaning if you're one through six, you have a grade, and you can get that um, through Kevin and Mexen uh, during the tutorials next week, uh, if you haven't got it, or Guys, would it be okay if they wanted to get the grade? Can they email you beforehand? Yeah, I think, yeah. Um, yeah, I guess email, email works if you guys even still do. If you haven't got it and you're, and you're curious about that. But you'll have them by next week if you haven't gotten them. Um, I'm going to hand out your, your pop quiz number two. And you, you know, you'll need to know what you're getting on those, on those pop quizzes. If you were here and you got a grade for the first one, great. If you have two no-shows, it's minus 10 points already, and I'm going to knock you down on class participation because it means you're not showing up to class. So just bear in mind, out of this class gets graded out of 100 points total. 40 of them you know, come from uh, the debates, and 10 come from quizzes, 20 come from your final. Just keep those things in mind. You should have the basis of a score for yourself right now. You don't have all your assignments completed, but you have you know, if you've had your debates, you have um, probably half of your grades so far. So that will help you to understand what you need to do. You're going to turn in your domestic worker project surveys to your tutorials. You're going to write your section, your tutorial section, in the upper right-hand corner. And you're going to connect them all together through some means, rubber band, paper clip, or staple. So all ten of yours, or all seven of yours, come in one fell swoop. That way I can grade you a little bit easier on that. Okay? Everybody clear on that? Finally, Kevin, we didn't realize this, but May 1st, I guess, is a holiday. Oh, yeah, Labor Day. Okay, so I think we originally scheduled to have your final on April 24th. So prepare yourself to do your final, the 10 question final, two points apiece for each question next week. Um, also, uh, you're going to do evaluations of the course in your tutorial next week. So everyone listen up please. Bring your laptops to the tutorial. It's an electronic online evaluation. So bring your laptops to your tutorial. Three key things for you to remember. Most important, final next week, 10, uh, 20 points, 10 questions, two points apiece. Domestic worker project surveys turn into your tutorials in one, one packet with a staple or a paper clip or a rubber band. And finally, the evaluations during your tutorials. Bring your laptop so you can get online and do them, okay? All that being said, uh, we come now to debate number seven. We have our proposition on my left, as always, right? My opposition on my right, as always. And uh, the actual debate proposition is as follows. How'd you guys like Art, by the way? It's pretty interesting. He's someone that's, uh, that's done a lot in this environment. And, uh, and I think, you know, when I introduce you to these people, feel free. They've accepted the fact that um, they're here, that you can contact them afterwards. So feel free to write them and email them. Don't be shy about it. Especially, you know, you might be looking for an internship or a job or advice. Feel free. All the people that we've had in here have agreed to you contacting them uh, independently of class. So you can do that. Okay, here we go. Debate number seven, the proposition, the use of social media and other online communication tools were the critical factors that transformed the Arab Spring from a series of national uprisings to a regional revolution. Did we change it? Is that the old syllabus? Okay, okay. This guy's in shock and awe. They go, what? <laughs> okay, here we go. This is the updated. Debate number seven. Proposition employers should not be allowed. Okay, right, we did change this. I'm working out the old syllabus. I hope you guys are. Proposition employers should not be allowed to monitor employers' off duty social media use as a method for gathering evidence for employer disciplinary action and termination. Okay, exactly what we were talking about today with art, some of those things about privacy and. Uh, and 
security. Okay, again, debate number seven. You guys all caught your breath, no more heart attacks. Employers should not be allowed to monitor employees off duty social media use as a method for gathering evidence for employers' disciplinary action and termination. Okay, proposition. Please begin your opening arguments. Hi, I'm Anson. Today our team is going to present four arguments on why employers should not be allowed to monitor employees' off-duty social media use as a method for gathering evidence for employee disciplinary action and termination. An employment contract gives rise to the identity of employer and employee during working periods. The authority of the employer is given by the contract. We believe that under no circumstances the employers could monitor any off-duty aspects of their employees because this is out of the authority as an employer. They definitely have the right to judge employees on their working performance, but it is unreasonable to use information gathered from off-duty platforms like social media in making any work time decisions such as disciplinary action. This is actually infringing the employee's privacy. Moreover, is social media a reliable source of information? The internet is such a free platform where no one guarantees things post online unnecessary to be true or accurate, especially for social media having such an informal use. So, can the information gathered from the social media serve as powerful evidence and really help the employers to have a comprehensive understanding of their employees? This way of monitoring employees also disturbs the normal function of social media and the basic human needs to socialize with others. Because of its convenience and multiple functions, social media has become so popular that it is the major platform for communication and socializing activities around the world in the 21st century. The problem of this monitoring way is the employers are actually exerting immense mental pressure onto their employees and discouraging them from expressing themselves and socializing through social media platforms. This interrupts their normal socializing life. You may wonder that we are just considering the issue from the point of view of the employees. However, this monitoring way can be adverse to employers too. This is because it would lead to distrust between employers and employees. Employers can actually utilize the social media's function to foster the communication within the company. Turning social media into another monitoring tool does not bring members of a company closer together, but pulls them further apart. Based on the above arguments, we strongly believe that today's motion must stand. Thank you. Um, before we start discussing about this issue about the employers looking at the employees looking at employers social media, I believe that it's really first important to look at the definition of um, social media. But um, so in looking for social media, one of which could be also one we are more familiar with, the social network services. So those social media such as MySpace, Facebook, Cyril, Twitter, Weibo, as we usually use. And we can define social network services as sites which are web-based services that allow individuals to first construct a public or semi-public profile within a bounded system. Second, to articulate the list of other users within whom they share a connection. And third, view and transfer their list of connections and those made by others within the system. Understanding the meaning of social media better, I think the following are our argument. First, since social network is creating another profile on your online, it is important to maintain a good representation of yourself and the company. Also, the fact that this is done on online, it is almost impossible to completely delete the information that you have written on the internet. The online data may lead to important comments that will negatively affect the reputation or leave a bad impression of the company. Ending in ending in the terminal result. If such comments lead to negative reputation of negative impressions of the company, it could greatly affect the company. Secondly, knowing that social media allow individuals to construct a public profile, it allows information to flow from one to the other in greater speed. 
speed that is so fast that it's impossible to compare with the information flow of the offline. Due to this characteristic of social media, employers should be able to monitor employee social media to see if there's any private information about company comment or their social media. Lastly, we want to emphasize that by monitoring, it would help the work internally. Being able to monitor social media would help both employee and employer to maintain a stable internal work environment. Social media allows the interaction on online and can see what and how employers think about each other. This would help to maintain the core value of the company. Using social media as a method for gathering evidence for employee disciplinary action or termination might be very uncomfortable for the employees. However, if we think about this issue from a different view, whatever we post on the social media is being used as an evidence of who this person is and the information. Thought this process we could about the certain person. So there is no big difference between employers looking at employees. It is actually the same as any random person going online and looking at your personal posts and information about you. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Daniel from Tutorial Group G. The first argument of the slide will be privacy of the employees. I would like to emphasize that employers and employees are equal human beings bound by employment contracts. Thus, employers should treat employees with respect and have no authority over employees at off duty periods. However, we have seen cases of employers asking for their employees' Facebook account and password, in which one of them, one of the victims, Robert Collins, has succumbed to the pressure and surrendered his Facebook account in the fear of losing his job. Facebook company protested strongly against this intrusion of personal privacy by posting an article protecting your password and your privacy claiming that it infringes the privacy of not only the employee but also his friends. And we totally agree with this statement. As the employer which monitor the employee's account can see everything the employee and his friends have posted, similar to bugging the employee and hear all his conversation on the street. We would like to remind you here that not all, everything you post on social media, such as Facebook, are public to open to public. We can set a uh, password to certain secret groups and exchange information there secretly and expect the same privacy as we talk in our individual homes. However, if the employers monitor uh, employees' uh, social media through this way, we will totally destroy the privacy which is fairly expected. There, even if the employers monitor employees' social media for the sake of the company, we see no reason for the company's profit to require to privacy, one of the fundamental human rights. There are many cases rooted against the law enforcement agencies because of the investigation methods that violates constitutional privacy, one being the FBI's surveillance, which the California court ruled that FBI violates the Constitution by asking electronic communications companies to hand over subscribers' information. If even national security fails to justify breach in privacy, how can the profit of a firm succeed? It is important to note that most employers are not trained in law enforcement agencies, but have little knowledge in handling sensitive personal information and the security corresponding to it. These factors increase the risk of exposing employees' personal information and damage the privacy of the employee which leads to more reason of not trusting personal information to their employers. To conclude, monitoring social media is an unethical behavior which is no better than installing surveillance device on employees that seriously violates privacy of the employee and his friends and family members. Thus, today's motion must stand. Thank you. I'm Kenneth. And here is my first argument. It concerns the company reputation. As everyone knows, the employee of the company represents the company. If the reputation of the company is damaged due to the fault of the employee, the employer should have the right to gather evidence for the employee disciplinary actions. Employees have obligation to their employer, even when using personal social media accounts outside the office. For example, 
for every company, there would be code of conduct rules that apply to offer time, and these rules should also be applied to the social media. The point is, if the offer activities affect the reputation of the company, the employer have, has every right to use those data against the employees. Let's think about the difference between online and offline. In offline world, if you say something bad about the company, like say, the information about the company publicly, the employee has the right to carry out disciplinary action. But the case applies to the online world, it will be the same. Therefore, the employees can gather evidence using the social media. There are already many cases uh, supporting the readers. In 2007, an intern told his supervisor for that he was going to miss work due to a family emergency. And it turns out that the intern shows up in a whole Halloween party. And his supervisor finds this out using an uh, image on his Facebook page, and as a result, he was fired. And this is because the employee thinks that the employer, the employee is not suitable for his position. And there are other cost cases as well. For example, in a case in US, the, uh, the editor in this case stated that the employee has the right to create personal blogs and entitled to his opinions, but publicly display, displaying those opinions have consequences within an employment relationship. When an employee expresses her contempt for her managers, ridiculing her co-workers, and she is engaged in serious misconduct, that would severe the employment and justify the dis dismissal. From this case, we can see that all nine of work activities are not really off work and would be regulated. And here is some argument against the privacy. Uh, it is because the employee has, has the right to fix the privacy settings in the social media account. If the employee does not apply privacy settings to the account, it connect to, connected publicly, and they don't expect much expectation to privacy. So for gathering evidence, it is, as long as it is legal and work-related, uh, there is no problem. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Kalian. Our second argument is that the information collected from the internet are not reliable. Firstly, employers have no right to monitor employee off duty social media by means of terminating the contract with them, even if the employees discuss their working environment and other issues of the company on social media, according to the rules from the National Labor Relations Board in USA. Employers are now not allowed to monitor their employees through social media, and there must be some critical reasons. When we talk about whether the monitor should be allowed, it comes to concerns on the accuracy of information collected from the internet, and whether the information collected can be reliable enough as evidence for this disciplinary action or termination to the employee. Some people believe that the, um, the responsibility they have to bear after posing with their online identity will be less than what they did in reality. Indicates that the information on social media is not necessarily true, and the accuracy of it should be lower than that obtained offline. There are often fake information, rumors, and hoax. One of the examples showing the unreliability of online information is the case of Megan Mir, a 13 years old American girl who suicided after being cyberbullied by her friend using a fake online profile of a teenage boy that eventually pushed Megan to death. The tragedy alarms that how easy it is to set up a fake profile, and there's no way to deny that the accuracy of online information especially for social media, is hard to be proven and also not reliable enough to become evidence. Moreover, problems occur if the employers are allowed to use evidence collected from off-duty social media 
as evidence obtained from social media are often raw data, for example, photographs. The meaning of the data is solely dependent on employers' subjective interpretation, which may be biased, resulting to irrational decision on termination. It's highly possible that it can become an excuse for employers to terminate their employees based on their favor, which can become a loophole for discrimination on employees, as it is too easy for people to set up a fake profile on social media. Therefore, our motion must stand. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, opposition argument number two, please. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Jackie from Opposition Side. My argument focuses on the com confidential business information. Well, an employee, when an employee enters the company, he actually enters the social network of the company as well. Well, he, he gains access to the sensitive information of the company, such as the financial details, uh, the human resources details, and even the international property information of the company portal. And an employee can accidentally leak out this information in, in the post of the Facebook, and this actually leads to serious, uh, serious damage uh, to the company. Well, allowing monitoring the uh, social media network of the employee actually protects this leak, uh, protect the company profits and prevent this kind of leakage. And it's reasonable to take this uh, disciplinary action if this kind of leakage is fine in the employee post. Uh, let's take a look at the case of the Franska Holding Corporation. Well, in March 2002, uh, in March 2012, I mean, uh, the chief financial officer of this company, Mr. Morris, uh, posts about his job and life and Facebook as usual. But unfortunately, his post contains some sensitive stock information of Franska Corp. And actually, this kind of information is uh, actually is very reliable and unfavorable role of this company spread around the market in the next few days and the damage has already been done. Uh, the stock price of France Hill Company uh, dropped in the next few weeks and the Human Resources Department actually terminated his stock because that could do such a potential harm to the company. And actually, uh, regarding on the reliability of the information and the internet, the, the, no matter if it's reliable or not, uh, the employee can actually post some information that actually cause harm to the company. Even if it's not reliable, the damage will be done. And actually, the, um, if, if this is not reliable, it actually serious hurt the honesty of the employee as well. Well, therefore, and actually the reliability is not, not an issue. And also, uh, a research done by Forrester Research Corporation shows that 82% of the company will actually watch 30 seconds. Will actually watch the company network to gain insight and change your business schedule accordingly. And actually, this actually wins many, many competition against company. Employees should be allowed to monitor the social network because uh, the, employee can nick, um, the, import, the employee can nick many important information, such as, so that the... Uh, Your time is up, thank you. Sorry. Okay, proposition argument number three, please. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Robo, and I am responsible for our third argument, which is disturbing the normal function of social media use and the basic human need of socializing with others. Firstly, I would like to emphasize the importance of socializing by the following example. According to the American Psychological Association, humans have a fundamental need to belong, just as we have needs for food and shelter. We also have needs for positive and lasting relationships. Moreover, according to Master Hierarchy of Needs, he explained the basic needs of humans must be sacrificed before the others. Otherwise, they would not be motivated. Socializing is a basic human need, and every one of us needs to communicate with the others to maintain a healthy social life and, a, and the function of social media could act as a platform for communication, also as a bridge for socializing and interacting with others. Secondly, the popularity of social media is gradually increasing due to its convenience 
and as it can be used with smartphone and other digital devices. Also, it is multifunctional. Therefore, social media has become so popular and we rely on it so much for communicating and keep ourselves connected with people around us. Consequently, social media has played a very important part in our daily life. In 2009, the Sheffield in Hampton fired Danny Ray and five other employees. The, the Sheffield claims that Danny Ray and the others were not completely on board with his re-election. However, the reason that really got Daniel fired is because he clicked like on, on the Facebook campaign page of the Sheffield uh, political competitor. This example shows employees' Facebook activity could lead to disciplinary action. Finally, I would like to stress that employer monitoring employees' off-duty social media use can lead to employees psychologically suffer. As they are really pressurized and extremely anxious, employers would oversee the use of social media. Also, employees would be afraid of receiving penalties and even disciplinary action for what they comment and share. Think about it. How does it feel like if you have to consider about your boss's reaction every time before you write a comment or even just to click like on Facebook? In order to protect the right of employees' social media use and maintain a healthy social life, our motion must stand. Thank you. Position your argument number three, please. Okay. Um, Huyen, there is a saying about that a truth has a double pair of wing. That means people tend to believe what they want to believe and what's more entertaining rather than the truth. The third point we would like to make is about the social conduct. Unlike affecting the company, unlike affecting the company reputation, this is more internal rather than external. The misbehavior of employees would break the code of practice of the company and destroy the workplace harmony, no matter the information online is trustful or not. One example is the Hong Kong Girl 500 case. A Hong Kong girl posted a status on Facebook complaining about people coming to wedding and only paid $500 for, $500 for gifts. This has aroused a lot of debates in Hong Kong and even overseas. This kind of comment is influential. The core value has been affected. If the employer monitored her online activities, he would have done something before the whole thing went big. The employer can talk about this issue with other employees and restrict the core value of the company. Another example is the case of West Coast Mafda. The company fired an employee because he posted insulting remarks of the employer and the managers on Facebook. According to the BC Labor Relations Board, the comments were offensive, insulting, and disrespectful. Employers take action after noticing something is going against other employees. This will build up a bad habit if the employers do not monitor employees' online social media as other employees will follow suit and think it is not a big deal. Employers should often monitor online activities or otherwise they will only know the best stuff through rivals or from the news. So it is important for employers for employees to understand the core value of the company. Moreover, comment, comments posted online have already affected others. So it is important to educate employees to, res, to be responsible for what they say and post online. On social networking sites, you don't know who is actually looking over your profile. Even the employers are not monitoring, they should be responsible for what they said. Without a doubt, it is important to maintain the core value of the company and create a harmonious workplace. This cannot be done if there are people spreading rumors or verbally attacking each other online. If employees are acting crazy and saying crazy stuff online, he or she might be a potential danger at work. To conclude, monitoring workers of duty online activities can be a way of maintaining the core value of the company, which can bring the company closer. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Mandy. There are many negative impacts if our motion doesn't stand. Apart from the possibility of obtaining inaccurate information from the social networking sites, which may cause unfair judgments to the employees and the loss of the function of the social media, this time we would like to look into the issue not only at the employee perspective, but the company side. 
This method indeed leads to the distrust between employers and employees and may cause a bad relationship within a company. Imagine this, if you are an employee and you know that your social media use in both working hours and off-duty hours is monitored by your boss, how do you feel? No doubt, most of the employees feel uncomfortable and unhappy about being monitored through social media and they will have a feeling that the company and their boss don't trust them. And hence, it may lower their motivation in working and even the productivity and in which may make the boss monitor, monitor them more strictly because of their poor working performances and it forms a vicious cycle. As what has been mentioned, the original function of the social networking site is about facilitating the communication between people. If the employers keep in monitoring employees' social media use, it violates the principle of setting up the social networking sites. The monitoring process will ruin the unity and the relationship in the company because employees will dare not to use the social networking sites to express their own views. So, the employers will never know about the employees' feelings towards the company. The employees may also hate the company because their freedoms of expression have been violated. As a result, it decreases their sense of belonging to the company. As a matter of fact, employers can actually make good use of social media to unite the employees. For example, some companies set up Facebook group in order to gather to the employees for leisure chatting or for expressing ideas. Social media can definitely foster the communication between employees and employees. However, monitoring them through social media kills the chance of using social media as a bridge of uniting the company. With this negative effect, affecting both the company and the employee. We strongly believe that employers should not be allowed to monitor employees' off-duty social media use as a method for gathering evidence for employee disciplinary action or termination. Thank you. Here I'm just making making four counter arguments against the opposition uh, opposition side that, that there are larger problems in their arguments. First, uh, they have said that um, actually employees are represent their company in off duty social media use, and I want to say that uh, yes, actually the social network you have a profile that and you maybe put a sentence like okay I work for Apple Corporation in your profile. Sorry, but this down here. Um, do you have an argument? Alright, uh, I'm Guru, um, and I just want to say, uh, as a final thought, I want everyone to just imagine owning their own company that they built from the ground up, and imagine having an employee that consistently posts negative comments about your company, insults you, your other employees, and consistently leaks private strategic information to your competitors on social media. Our opponents believe that, as the owner of this company, you can't really do anything about that, and they can really just grind your company to the ground. We, on the other hand, believe that you should be able to do something. Uh, first off, we believe you should be able to do something because employees represent the company and those employees can negatively affect the company's public perception and reputation. So therefore, employers should have the right to take actions against employees that damage that reputation. Secondly, employers need to be able to monitor employees' social media because it's very easy for confidential private company information to be made public and spread rapidly via social media, which can be extremely detrimental to the company and employees. Monitoring social media minimizes this risk. 
finally being able to monitor social media helps me pay a stable internal work environment. Um, much like a teacher might be seeing an ordinary classroom with young children, an employer uh, being able to monitor interactions amongst employees online allows for a safer, more productive work environment for everybody, including employees. What's the arguments on the proposition? There you go. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone, again. I will conclude our argument in short words. Firstly, employers monitoring off-duty social media as evidence for taking actions within the working relations is an infringement of privacy. Secondly, information collected from social media is not reliable or comprehensive and sometimes not uh, relevant at all to serve as evidence to make judgments. Thirdly, this monitoring way creates fear and pressure and interferes the basic human need of social life and socialization. And lastly, monitoring leads to distrust and a negative boss-employee relationship, which is of course bad for the mutual interest within the work workers and the company, eventually the boss himself. So our motion must stand. Thank you. Okay, for first is that uh, the, the represent, you, you say that the employees represent their company, but I think in this age that everyone on the social media, they have multi-identities. I mean, an, an employee, what he said or what he posts off-duty in his social media doesn't necessarily mean that, okay, when, when uh, an employee from the Apple Corporation, he posts a, uh, in a, in a alcohol party, that picture, does it mean, mean that the whole company of Apple are drink cards? Of course not. And that, actually, the second one is you said that about the confidential information of a company. And I think, first, if, if someone really wants to leak the confidential uh, information, he will not use the social media, right? And secondly, I think everything we will consider the possibilities and the consequences. I mean, you can say that everyone has a very, very tiny possibility to kill others. So we have to monitor everyone's everyday life, right? So we can't say that the employers monitoring the employees of duty social media use as evidence to make disciplinary actions is justified because there is a very, very tiny uh, possibility for employees to leak data. And the last question is that. I'm giving you a minute of these Okay. Uh, opposition, you want to respond to the opposition's uh, counter arguments? Um, you have mentioned that the online has uh, multi identity. It means multi identity doesn't mean that each, each identity is different. Multi identity could be defined as each. It doesn't mean that because it's multi identity, we don't have to care about each identity. It is multi identity because each identity has identity. Identity <laughs> has. <laughs> each identity represents some um, importance. And also, you have um, informed about the. Um, commenting on the the confidential information, um, social media does. I mean, social media does not only include like SMS systems like Facebook, but it also includes like um, blogs or such as emails because it's still like where you can transfer information which cannot be really seen to everyone, but you can already give it the pass away the information secretly. So I think it's uh, it is important to sort of look at it. Opposition, do you want to make a counter argument to uh, one of the proposition's points? Yes. Well, regarding your, uh, your counter argument on the piracy, pirate information, I want to say that uh, actually, internet is different from the real world. Well, you are saying that uh, uh, we, we should not monitor because uh, we have a little chance to kill, kill people in the real world. But in internet, the information is actually spreading much, fast, much faster. Uh, when, you, when you accidentally type something out that may cause uh, damage to the economy, it cannot be stopped because it's very fast, so fast that uh, every minute it will spread, uh, spread to 10 more people and it will spread to millions and millions of people that understand it. And, and monitoring the, so the social media is just in case that because uh, you, you, can stop the, you can stop the inference uh, the, at the control before, it, before it's out of the control. Proposition, do you want to respond to this counter argument or raise my ground? Go ahead. 
Okay, first, uh, respond to the counter argument. First, um, you have mentioned the difference between the online world and the offline world. Yes, and I, we've mentioned it as well that on the online world, the information itself is not really, is not. I, I think it, it's not uh, comprehensive and not reliable reliable enough to become evidence. You know what we're talking about is is the employers. Uh, they should should we allow them to to monitor and use what information they monitored as evidence to take disciplinary actions. So I think this may answer your question. And there is a final uh, counter-argument counter to what you've said in your opening speech, in that you, know, you said that uh, monitoring the employees off-duty off uh, social media use will, will be helpful to ma maintain a stable working condition, that the employer may be able to know how the employees think about each other and make it a very harmonious uh, working condition. But I, I really want to say that it's a really imbalanced stuff, right? Because the employer just come and said, oh, I want to know your Sorry, ideas, so I have to monitor you. Thanks. Opposition, you can raise it. Uh, you can respond to that argument or raise one of your own. Final chance. Any uh, uh, comments? Uh, you, you have mentioned that uh, if you allow the employer to act, to monitor the social media, it would raise untrust among the employees and the employers. But why would this untrust be advised? It's because the employees may post some, something bad about the company, they post some, something bad about these co-workers. If this doesn't happen, there would not be any mistrust between the workers. So, so I wonder that maybe it's the reason that the employees itself, they are just they are curiously often complaining about the company and make ridiculous comments about the company. So, so that's why they just fear about the monitoring. Okay. All right, the, both sides have gotten a chance to address each other on arguments and counter arguments. Let's open up to the class. Any questions for either of these? Um, I would just like to um, ask one thing. If, for example, a Apple, sorry, sorry. Which side are you asking? the proposition, sorry. <laughs> if, for example, um, a employee of the Apple company, then, uh, like, for example, releases information just on the social media um, network, maybe like on Facebook, they wrote a post saying, "Oh, iPhone six is going to come out soon." Is that and? Um, company policy is not to tell anybody, right? Then is that punishable? Okay, so what we're uh, emphasizing a lot of times uh, in today's debate is about the authority of the employers in how much they can actually monitor. So, actually, I've already mentioned about the, uh, the identity of the uh, employers that comes from this uh, contract. So, actually, it only has the rights to monitor those things happening during working hours or working functions. But, I mean, now the social media is so popular that it's already a part of our normal life. So, I mean, if you're monitoring the uh, social media is like putting spy cameras at employees' house. And I mean, for your case, actually it's not, uh, the, uh, not within the authority of the employees, uh, of, the, of the employers, because they could hand over the case to the business crime investigations, but it is not the employer's authority to use that social media thing to make their own decisions on termination. Okay, one question. Um, hi, I have a question for, oh, I have a question for Daniel from Tutorial G of the proposition. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I would like to ask how to balance um, employee privacy with the employee's responsibility to protect the interests of the company. Is there any point at which individual privacy should give away to company interests. Really good question. Well, I think that uh, privacy is basically more important than uh, 
uh, the company's uh, reputation or profit. Of, co of course, the employee have have uh, obligation to the company to uh, ensure the reputation or like uh, profit. But here we are talking about that giving the authority to the employees. We actually monitoring them. Uh, like saying that if you kill somebody in your own house, that's illegal, right? That's wrong. But does that mean that uh, it is okay for police to install spy cameras in every house just to prevent murder? Of course not. But uh, I mean that if employees does think wrong, like uh, Lee King's uh, business strategy in the Facebook uh, or the other blogs, then of course it's wrong and should be liable to prosecution. But does that mean that uh, the employer have to write to yeah, to ask for the password and just striving to look not only at his own page but also his other groups and all the things his friends and family are posting. I I don't think so. Okay, thank you. All right, let's just sum up the arguments that were made here uh, on the proposition. They're saying that um, that employers really shouldn't be going through your social media because of the privacy of the employee. Internet information is unreliable. Uh, it disturbs the normal function of social media, which is allows to connect each other without that kind of interference, and it creates employee-employer distrust. On the opposition side, they say that the company's reputation is, is at stake, confidential business information can also be at stake, and both workplace harmony and workplace order can be threatened uh, if they're not allowed to monitor uh, social media by their employer, employees. rather. So let's take a vote. Everyone that believes the proposition has uh, has made their argument and that the proposition does stand, please raise your hand. Let's do a count. Okay, anyone who believes the opposition has made their argument? Raise your hand. 37 to 5, the proposition stands. Okay, thank you both. These were really good arguments. Sometimes they're hard to make. They put you in bad positions. Um, but obviously everyone in the classroom is empathetic towards uh, the way you drive the seat. It seems like that way. So thank you very much. Your pop quizzes are coming around. Uh, I don't want to create workplace.